Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Goodbye Soldier by Spike Milligan. So this is the sixth and absolutely, utterly, completely the last volume of the War Memoirs for the time being. Now, I've read his War Memoirs kind of out of order, so, um, but I don't think it really matters. I don't think you need to read them cro like chronologically. Uh, so I'm going to read you the blurb here. A little known historical fact. At the end of the Second World War, many of our boys sustained severe attacks of entertainment at the hands of Lance Corporal Milligan and his jazz band. Outbreaks occurred in Rome, Venice, Vienna, and Krumpendorf, that well-known groin disease, and no soldier escaped the tortures that were inflicted by the combined services entertainment. But while Tommy suffered, Milligan, newly demobbed, became more and more spazonkled, nay, spazonkified with Tony, the beautiful ballerina. Honestly, he's got the photographs to prove it. In Italy, in love and in civvies, could Milligan forget his native Catford? You bet your life he could. So, Milligan has a very specific sense of humour, I think. Um, you know, I believe he worked on the Goon show. I should probably look that up before I publish this video, but I probably won't. And I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And um, yeah, I think by reading some of the flags out, you'll get a feel for that. One thing I will say is that he was quite racist. I mean, he was a product of his times, but some of the words he uses. I mean, to be fair, like he uses a lot of, like he uses the C word. Should I say it? He, he says cunt. He says cunt in it. So yeah, like he was... You know, he could be vulgar with his language at times. He was a former soldier, you know? So, but yeah, it is uncomfortable reading it sometimes. So I thought this was quite funny. Yeah, um, this little exchange they have. I said it was a very good watch. It told the time in Italian as well as English. What was her name? My name is Maria Antoinetta Fontana, but everyone call me Tony. I'm Spike, sometimes known as Stop Thief or Hey You. I thought this, this little joke made me laugh as well. Her mother is tall, fair-haired and blue-eyed, and I was soon to know she was French by descent, like parachuting from the Eiffel Tower. We get a reference to Cockney, uh, Cockney rhyming slang here. Uh, so, Mulgrew has an evil sense of humour, i.e. Hall rolls his silic i.e. Hall rolls his cigarettes, so Mulgrew manages to mix magnesium powder with Hall's backy. With blackened face and singed eyebrows, Hall walks the hotel corridors with a stick shouting, All right, you've fucking done it! Worse to come, Mulgrew, who by damping round paper had made a realistic Richard, Richard the Third equals turd, places it in Gunnar Hall's bed with a note, the phantom strikes again. I thought this paragraph was quite beautifully written. Um, I, I normally think of Spike Milligan as more of a comedic writer than a deep writer, but I, I certainly think he's quite apt here. It was the sort of conversation that millions of people make when they first meet. Looking at it these 40 years later, it looks boring. So what made it worthwhile at the time? The sound of her voice? The movement of her lips? The look in her eyes and that peculiar tilt of her head when she spoke. A hand gesturing to make a point. Yes, I suppose all those things and the unexplainable biological call of matching chemistry that takes charge of the entire you and dedicates it to another person. It's all pretty miraculous stuff. It does wear off, but it will always haunt you. A sudden tune, a perfume, a flower, a word, and the ghost of all those yesterdays returns for a fleeting moment like a wind's caress. Ah, youth. This amused me. She smiles because I'm so serious. Why, why, why do females always laugh at males in distress? Whenever my father struck his head on a beam in the cellar, my mother, her sister and my grandmother burst into hysterical laughter and locked themselves in the sewing room so my father wouldn't hear. Is it the ultimate triumph of woman over man? Did Eve laugh when she first saw Adam's willy? Willy, what a word for it. This exchange also tickled me. Someone's made a cock up. Then dismantle it. Here we get a perfect example of, as I was saying, this sort of working class soldiery barracky humour. Um, Mulgrew guffaws. Bloody hell, he says. Some of the old boilers I've seen you with don't look like they'd last the walk home. Looks aren't everything in Tones Hall. I mean, most of these young tarts show them a prick and they'd faint. Mulgrew is laughing. No wonder. When I saw yours, I nearly fainted. For a start, it's got a bend in it. It's not a bend. It's a slight curve, says Hall. Curve, laughs Mulgrew. It nearly goes round corners. I was crying with laughter. Barrack room humour. There's nothing quite like it. I thought this bit was quite cool because, um, I mean, I'm learning French, but also I like like old school medieval history. Um, the lunch over, I and Tony explore the castle. Built of monumental stone blocks, it is very haunting. Near the keep is a hole in the ground that I recognise as the oubliette. What is oubliette, Terry? I explain it means forget in French. This is where they drop prisoners that were to be forgotten. Nasty. I wonder when archers last stood at these cruciform slits in the wall. All life would have been here. Feasting, romance, battles, intrigue. What happened? Who was the last person to leave this place and why? So many questions and no answers. 
I thought this was entertaining. He's talking about some newspaper headlines from uh, the Union Jack newspaper. Herbert Morrison promises full employment for many years ahead. Spanish frontier sealed. Russia asks America for big loan. Nuremberg defence opening delayed. Ah, here is the best one. Hitler's ex-secretary arrested, the copy reads. She is said to have lost none of her fanaticism for the Nazi cause and prays nightly beneath a picture of Hitler who, like God, appears to be deaf. Ah, a funny one. A blood donor in Australia had so much alcohol in his blood that the recipient got pissed. So all that is going on in the world. What a jolly place it is. I thought that he got a package from his mother. It said, uh, in the bedroom, I eagerly unwrap it. It contains chocolate, cigarettes, and pile suppositories. Ah, how sweet. Something for each orifice. And this was great too. Uh, like my mother, I have perfect pitch. Back home, if I dropped a fork on the floor with a clang, my mother would say what key it was in. Apparently, if I remember rightly, I was eating my breakfast in E flat. This is another great example of his humour. We are all wearing our rather shapeless travelling clothes. Tony's are too big for her, while I'm too thin for mine. People keep knocking on my shirt to see if I'm in. Something I think you can relate to if, you've, if you are or you've ever been a smoker, he says, I've been smoking cigarettes at a rate. My mouth feels like the inside of an Arab wrestler's jockstrap. Ugh, yuck, splutter. I decide to give up smoking until the next one. Another great line here as well. When I return to my room, the maid is turning down my bed and I hadn't even offered it to her. So yeah, all in all, I did enjoy this. It's very humorous. Spike Milligan has his uh, own brand of humor. Like I say, there were one or two bits where it was a little bit uncomfortable uh, the way he was talking. But again, I mean, he was a soldier in the Second World War. So kind of got to ex excuse him a little bit, I guess. Uh, I gave this a four out of five and would recommend it if you've enjoyed the little bits that I've read out today. So there we have it, that's what I thought of Goodbye Soldier by Spike Milligan. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you've read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.